Welcome back to another new series. Welcome to Minsk, the capital city of Belarus, one of the countries in Eastern European region, <laughs> where this is my very first experience being in the region itself. A simple question if you ask me why Belarus? The simple answer to that would be because as an Indonesian passport holder, I do not have a lot of privilege in being able to you know traveling around the region without considering the visa situation so the reason being here is simply because if i only have got one country that i can go to for a 30 day you know tourist duration where i don't have to think about the visa situation why not use that and utilize that to my best ability my reason being here is to focus on the human side story on the tourism part of the country you know try to reduce the preconceived ideas that we all we all have probably about belarus and anything that we have heard so far about the country I flew into Minsk in the beginning of October and was in one of the only two flights arriving on that day. I was eligible for a 30-day visa-free as long as I enter and exit the country through Minsk International Airport. I booked a $19 room in a shared apartment with a window overlooking the train pass by. The first 48 hours of my solo travel was merely observing and absorbing this new environment. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous or anxious coming to Belarus. I sense fear in me from the news that I consume while researching and the uncertainty that came along with it. While fear is important to keep us alert, I know that every country has different layers to unravel. Through my solo travel, I hope to showcase the other side of Belarus. We're currently in the Independence Square where I can see Lenin's statue from here. It is sitting majestically over there and quite eerily empty because it's Saturday in the morning. And I think this is sort of the main landmark of Minsk. As you can see, this is Lenin Monument in comparison to a real person over here and behind the Lenin Monument. There is a house of government, Minsk Oblast or region, being that Minsk city is the capital city of Belarus, uh, is located right at the heart of the country, meaning that this is the only region and the only city that is not so close to any kind of border of any kind of country surrounding Belarus because Belarus itself being a landlocked country it is surrounded by Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania as well as Latvia. Minsk has suffered many disasters, destruction and occupation since 1505 and was almost completely demolished throughout the World War II and during the Soviet era. In 1919, it became the capital of Belarusian People's Republic and remained the capital when Belarus gained independence in 1991. Minsk grew in population and was subsequently rebuilt with abandoned parks, wide boulevards and many blocks of apartment buildings. If there is one word to explain Minsk, from my impression is that it's entirely clean. I mean, at least, at least so far, the area that I've seen, there is no single trash or litter or people littering. It's so much cleaner, even in comparison to London, Manchester, let alone countries in Asia or South Asian region. <laughs> It's not an apple to apple comparison. As you can see, this is Simon and Yelena or Helena Church. And over here you have 
Minsk hotel and this particular hotel probably not probably is definitely much older than me over here we do have another statue but along of this is supposedly a fountain if it's working if you see the statement or name over there it indicates the six oblasts or region in belarus from brest grodno mohilov vitebs as well as homel and minsk itself so there are six region uh, hello <laughs> Apart from being clean, there are a few other things that I find it magnificent from this particular city. One of it being the central post office building. I think it is a mag magnifique <laughs> or avant-garde type of building. It, it, it just let me in such an awe with the details, the architecture, everything that I have never seen. I personally have a thing for central post office, postcards, train station, railway, and everything surrounding it. And this fills my heart with such joy. Can you please adore this magnificent four pillars with an actual clock? that tells the time welcome to the inside of the main central post office from here you can probably send out postcard letters over here there are many souvenirs that's a quick tour but i always find it fascinating to be able to visit different post office this whole avenue all of this busy street is basically known as lenin lenin ulitsa or lenin street but i am walking towards the karl marx uh, ulitsa or karl marx street basically quite known with nice cafes and restaurants Can you see this casino building? Shangri-La. Not that I'm interested in playing casino, but this Shangri-La building reminded me probably one of the buildings I've seen growing up in Jakarta that probably no longer exists. But so far, this is strategically located in front of this Crown Plaza Hotel and many other hotels like Minsk City within walking distance, probably aiming for tourists to spend their money on this particular place. For me personally, as a tourist, Minsk and specifically this Independence Avenue is basically very efficient because all of the landmarks, all of the main sites are located within this stretch of uh, avenue or street and all of the buildings within this particular area is a great example as to how the Stalin uh, empire style looks like due to the warmer weather everyone is out and about and i think it gives this feeling of um weekend feeling do you know what i mean and it's it's nice actually we got lucky with the weather because it could be just gray cold misty over here we have central bookstore sorry if you feel like finding some books about belarus russian speaking uh books or postcards this is also a very great alternative to the post office
can you see here it says Lenina and over here the first time I saw it I was curious as to why there are so many people coming in and out I realize it now that this is a department store this is not some kind of your regular department store this is Goom the department store dating back to the 1950s with cafeteria dining room as well as soviet realist architecture a friend of mine alina mcleod on youtube here recommended me to check out the stolovaya or canteen in this particular department store let's enter one of these look at the grand design of the stairs who would have thought a department store could be so exciting like this? If you're tired of shopping or walking, there are some benches in one of the floors. I don't know, I adore it. I've never seen quite nothing quite like this in terms of the architecture. Welcome to the Stolovaya in Goom. <gasps> they are closed! Oh, because it's Saturday. What a shame, what a shame. <laughs> So if you are visiting during weekdays, it'll probably be open. Another underground in Minsk because we're going to take the underground metro. I think I was wrong. That was not the way to go to the underground metro. I think it's still a few meters away. If you see the sign, this means that there is a metro underneath it but what i find it very very fascinating upon this particular metro is this art that depicts the ssr or ussr the entrance is over here so you see there is a mince metro map so we are currently in Kastrichnitskaya. Zastroshe, Odin ticket, school school? Ah, da. So 80. Spasiba. We have my, our ticket right here. So we put it here and get in. you save all of the coins you have from all of the changes from any kind of payment because it'll be useful to pay for buses trains my train is coming station be more Soviet look the reminiscence of Soviet Union with the station name being Lenin <laughs> oh my god it is fascinating this underground metro it's like tapping into another world that I didn't know existed and I don't care where it takes me. I just need to have this experience and stop over even one after the other of such metro station. Welcome to the Victory Monument. The afternoon sun makes it a bit romantic, <laughs> especially with the flowers on the street right here people cycling and uh, enjoying the Saturday afternoon. Being my first time here, uh, I can only see and showcase sort of the main areas, the sort of tangible side of Minsk, because if you like to see and experience an alternative of Minsk, there is this particular website that I would recommend reading because it is such a great uh, sort of travel guide from a local perspective. Look at this beautiful gate to one of the parks in Minsk. Always love green areas, but look at this park and how 
There are kids playing around right here in the playground. My pet peeves of myself is that I have such a weak bladder that I have to pee once in every probably 30 minutes. <laughs> oh my God, that's my struggle. But worry not because in this park, they have a toilet. As you can see, this toilet costs 80, not 80 rubles, but 80 cents of rubles. What a lifesaver, honestly. Toilet. <laughs> but I think I am entering an amusement park. Over here, you have many different games and cashier over there, but it's closed. There are different shops selling popcorn, ice cream, and there is a Ferris wheel, I think. That way, oh, I think the Ferris wheel is not open. If you can see over there, it says Minsk. Oh. The color, <laughs> it's so outdated. It looks so outdated, but so fascinating. Wow, the state of this Ferris wheel. I wish it is open so that I can actually try. Everything seems to be closed during autumn and winter season. But even here, you see, there's a sign to Homiel. Orsha, another city in Belarus and Brest. Thank you so much for watching today's episode from the city of Minsk, the capital city of Belarus. I hope that you learn a thing or two or enjoy this video as a form of entertainment and a bit of education the glimpse into this particular city that I didn't know anything about prior to visiting, but it sort of has opened up my eyes to the other side of Eastern European countries as well as Belarus as a country itself. As of recording this video, Belarus do not have any kind of flight flying into Minsk other than flights from Russia as well as Istanbul. And I hope in the future things will be better for the country because sympathy is one word to actually address my feeling towards Belarusian people. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Would you actually travel to different places that you don't know anything about to learn from it firsthand? Would you actually travel alone in the first place despite the language barriers and zero knowledge about the culture? Yeah, I would like to know what you think and I can't wait to see you again on the next episode. See you. Bye.